Well, Carl Jockinson might not exactly be a household name in Australian sport, but he's putting Aussie fishing on the map in the United States. He's been good enough to give us a little bit of his time. G'day, Carl. How are you going? Good, Pat. Good. Really good. Good to be back. Yeah, about a year ago, we got to talk to you about the Bassmaster Series Elite Competition. Can you just explain to our viewers at home who might not be familiar with, I guess, the world of professional fishing in the United States, what yeah. this competition you've been involved in all year is all about? So it's called the Bassmaster Elites. It's the top 100 guys in the world. They cut it off at 100 and um, no Australian has ever made it in history. It's been running for, um, you know, 60 plus years and uh, I, I've competed for five years in the Open Series to try and make it and last year I become the first Aussie to ever make it and uh, this year was my rookie year. Um, it's basically the top 100 guys in the world, you're trying to catch largemouth and smallmouth bass and um, we try and catch five per day. You've got an eight hour session, your five biggest bass and you bring them back to the, to the weigh-in and you weigh those five biggest bass and it's over four days. Um, so you're competing for $100,000 for first, uh, $10,000 for 50th, and uh, all the fish are released afterwards, and uh, it's, a, it's just a great concept. So obviously you've got a limited amount of time to go and catch your fish. Yeah. There must be some interesting tactics that come into it. Do certain people spend a lot of time just travelling to a spot that they think might yield better catches? Is that the way it works? Yeah, so you, we're fishing all over America, from California, New York, everywhere. So different locations all the time. And as you can see there, that my bass boat's, what, you know, it's a, it's a hundred plus thousand dollar rig. It does 75 miles an hour on the water and you can travel for up to you know two hours to get to your first spot. So we've got um we've got Navionics, you know, depth finders like ten thousand dollars worth of graphs, like with Navionics, weather, apps, we need to know everything because sometimes you can be up to a hundred miles or you know 160 kilometers from where you started off and you have to get back with your five biggest fish within an eight hour period. So guys go to massive lengths to get to where they think they can win. Obviously it's big business. There's lots of sponsorship involved there's massive crowds excited to go and catch these sorts of events. What sort of money are we talking about in terms of the top end of the sport and perhaps the lower end of the sport? So every, every second week I compete for $100,000 for first. Um, 50th gets 10 grand, 51st get, first gets nothing. So you've got to stay in that top 50. Yeah. Um, the, the pinnacle that I, my dream now and I, my dream since a kid is make the Bassmaster Classic. That's the pinnacle of bass fishing. The top 50 guys fish for that. They weigh in in stadiums packed full of screaming fans. You drive your truck and boat in there, lift your fish out the live well. It's, it's crazy and it's for half a million dollars. So huge amounts of money. Kevin Van Dam is at the top of the game. He's won over six million dollars in prize money alone. So the top guys are, uh, you know, it's a it's a massive sport in America. It's huge. One part of your support team is quite an interesting one. Is Casey Stoner? I know that the yeah. last time we were here, he was you were saying that he chipped in, you know, a few tens of thousands of dollars to help yeah. keep you going. Are you still in contact with Casey? Is yeah. he still looking after you? Casey's been great. Eh? He's um, I just never would have been here without him. And just just seeing what he has achieved as a, as an Aussie has been a big inspiration for me. And I had a little. $6,000 truck that was breaking down and I just no way I would have put the K's on it and he's helped me out helped me out in so many different ways and that truck I've put nearly 140,000 miles on like all over the country so he's uh, he's been a huge part of my career. Obviously you're back in Australia at the moment no doubt talking to sponsors yeah I guess it's a bit of an off season as well I, I know at this time of year we're looking at a lot of football stories of Aussie rules players NRL players running up sand dunes doing lots of work in the in yeah. the gym weights is this an off-season view? What, what does a fisherman do to try and get ready for a, a new season? Yeah, it's definitely. I, I've brought the fitness side of things into it. When I made the elites, you know, I had, I've had these guys have 40, 50 years experience on me for largemouth, and the way that I um, kind of. Um, counteracted that was did the things that I knew I could I could change and fitness eating well and I, and I went off like what the golfers did you know if not that long ago you didn't have to be fit and healthy to be a professional golfer and now they're athletes and it's the same with fishing there's a younger generation coming up and that fitness and health has helped me you know with the mental side of the game and everything so when I'm home I'm seeing my family seeing my friends that I don't get to see all year catching some Aussie fish that I love and then just staying I'm in the gym I'm running every morning I'm staying and fit and just getting ready and focused for the next year. Does it allow you to fish for longer? 
100 percent in in summer i can be on the water for 16 hours 16 a day hours. so yeah it's a it's people you know it's been the hardest part they think fishing and you're like you're sitting on the boat with some bait or whatever you yeah. know but that's not what i do you can see i'm in snow i'm in 50 degree plus weather um, from daylight till dark i get in the tournament season i'll run off about four to five hours of sleep per night if i'm lucky and then alarm goes at 3 50 and i'm up ready to go again 16 hours on the water you do that for a couple of weeks in a row and see if it <laughs> see if you still think fishing's relaxing <laughs> carl it's some of, it's one of the great stories that we've come across over the last 12 months we're really enjoying the journey hopefully yeah. you are too good luck for next season we wish you all the best thanks pat i really appreciate it